Welcome to this episode of Best of America by Horseback. I'm Tom C. And I'm Kristen Bisco. Today's show, we're on the southern end of the Cumberland Plateau in Tennessee on the Alabama line. The name of the place is the Bolo Club. We've never been here before, and we are really excited to bring you this show. Here at the Bolo Club, it's generations old family farm. We've got some old historic buildings, a museum of the family and area. Uh, we got to ride up to and into a cave. Lots of different terrain of riding, including along the creek beds, and then up into the mountains along plateaus and overlooks where you get a beautiful view of the valley. Any level of rider can come here, and the trails are wide enough that you can ride two, three, four together and enjoy riding with your friends. The campground is fantastic. The bathrooms and facilities are as good as anywhere we've ever been before. I want you to sit back and relax and enjoy visiting with us at the Bolo Club here in Cumberland Plateau in Tennessee for another great episode. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We know about your big old truck and that trailer that you tow. We even heard about your toys. So, what's holding it all together? Good thing you know who to trust for trailer hitches. B&W Trailer Hitches. Trusted. Part of this show is brought to you by Mill Creek Manufacturing, makers of the first compact and stainless steel manure spreaders. They also make spin groomer arena rakes and now a new line of outdoor power equipment like the Mighty Ox log splitters and wood chippers. All top quality, high value equipment, all made in the USA. And by Spurs Big Fix, wound, skin, and hoof treatment. The more you use it, the more you'll love it. On this episode of Best of America by Horseback, we are riding in Sherwood, Tennessee, along the southern end of the Cumberland Plateau at the Bolo Club. This property was settled in 1927 by the Stubblefield family. Still owned by the same family, guests have the opportunity to enjoy their hospitality, learn about its rich history, and are welcome to ride and explore mountain trails that will lead you by caves, rock outcroppings, beautiful overlooks, and clear mountain streams. Riders who come here will feel like they're stepping back in time to a slower pace where they can enjoy the peacefulness and atmosphere of this wonderful place. You come from a great line of family that are just tight, and family means everything to you. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's um, we're, I'm third generation on this particular farm here, and um, actually in this cove, the earliest known stubble fields came up here uh, somewhere between 1810 and 1814. So there's a long lineage of, of stubble fields, um, you know, living in this particular cove. But it's you know it's our little bit of slice of heaven here, and um, got still a lot of old log cabins for my grandparents and what they've left here and. Behind us is, is a little museum that we have in uh, recognition of my grandfather. And he was an avid collector, whatever, anything old, I guess, whether it's uh, fossils and um, Civil War and um, uh, anything along that particular line. He, he liked collecting. And this is a little just showcase of some of the things that he'd collected through the years. So. trails we're going to be riding, people are wanting to know about what kind of trails are here. We're in the mountains, but also you can ride along the river where it's just entirely flat, so the options go from flat land to mm -hmm. a little more progressive. Yeah, we're at the tail end of the Cumberland Plateau, so um, uh, we've got some mountain trails that certain people find 
challenging. A lot of people like to ride them, but uh, uh, they are a lot more strenuous. Your horse does need to be a little bit better in shape. And the individual needs to be in a little bit better shape. But, but we also have the flat lands and, and the different fields and hay fields, and, and a lot of them parallel the, the creek going up and back and so on and so forth. So we've got a lot of, little bit of a mixture for uh, everybody. Now there's a cave up the creek a little bit. Tell mm -hmm. me about the cave. Well, that's called uh, Head of the Creek Cave, and uh, it's a pretty good sized cave. And the uh, Chickasaw, which were the earliest breed that was in here, uh, Indian Indians, um, until the Cherokees run them out, probably the early 1700s. But a lot of them camped in that cave up there when they were up here in hunting parties and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, it's a great cave. We found a lot of pottery in it before and old charcoal that was three and four, you know, feet deep. and, and uh, but it's a great location to go to, especially on days like today, because it's nice and cool in there. You love to trail ride, don't you? I do. I surely do. How is it here? How is it you pick this place to ride? The scenery, probably. The timber and the woods it reminds me a lot of the Great Smoky Mountains, which I do ride a lot and pack a lot in. And, uh, beautiful country, a nice place, a real good friendly atmosphere, and uh, it's just friendly folks. And, uh, anytime you're around horse people, you, you know, you're around good people. Now there are two campgrounds, mm -hmm. upper and lower. Tell me the difference and well the central bathhouse is in the upper uh, campground here and then we put another campground down here by the uh, by the creek as we like to call it graveled in and uh, easy pull in pull out it's got electricity and water and uh, you can pick at your horses some people like to be a little bit closer to the creek and also there's a little bit more shade there especially in the evening so uh, kind of expanded it out a little bit. And when we have certain groups in, some of them, you know, some of them prefer the lower campground and some prefer to be closer to the bathhouse. So, you know, you can kind of pick and choose which way you want to go. Now I know when we were setting up the ride, um, you told me that you have a couple of horses that people can rent. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Talk about I that think option that for... We've got some different options there for people to rent. Matter of fact, I think they're bringing up not bringing them up now to, to get ready for the ride this afternoon. So, uh, you know, you just need to give us a call. Let's, mm -hmm. let's kind of see what and how much experience you might have, and we'll try to hook you up with the best the best option for a horse. So, we have guides. If they come, you know, and they're not familiar with the area, and they would feel better with a guide, all they have to do is ask, and we do send a guide out. Now, for the the horses that they can rent, is there any particular level of rider they must be? Very simple. Mm -hmm. they, they don't they don't have to be very experienced. The horses are very good that we rent out. Uh, very calm, not any problem. Do they have to go out with a guide when they rent a horse yes, with you? Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm Steve Tucker. I'm the founder and president of Tucker Trail Saddles. We listen to our customers. We leverage the experience and craftsmanship of our team. And we embrace the goal to produce the most comfortable and functional trail saddle in the world. And we believe that we are offering with the New Horizon the absolute best and most comfortable trail riding saddle available today. I've ridden thousands of miles all over this country. The saddle I choose is a Tucker Saddle. Welcome back to Best of America by Horseback. We are at the Bolo Club in Sherwood, Tennessee, along the southern end of the Cumberland Plateau. Let's talk about the different buildings you have on the property. You've got mm -hmm. several places that if people don't have a living quarters trailer and they'd like mm -hmm. a building to stay in, you've got a couple of options for them. Got a few options. Um, we have the lodge, which was my grandparents' um, home that I've, I've redone. And, and um, 
modernized it, uh, I guess, uh, quite a bit. So uh, the lodge is pretty nice, and we have the Lucas house that is a, is a bunkhouse. And then in the barn, we have an old corn crib that we've converted into a, a bunkhouse also, and appropriately, we call it the crib. So, um, but yeah, and you can tent camp if you like. We actually have quite a few people that come in and tent camp if they don't have a trailer. So, uh, a um, few different options there for them for, uh, if they don't have a big camper. You've got two different areas mm -hmm. here where people can gather, the pavilion and the barn loft. Can you tell us a little bit about those two areas? Yeah, the uh, pavilion is kind of a, uh, it's, I started as a kind of a common area, people to congregate and to meet. And uh, if you're looking for somebody, you know, you, you might want to check there first. So, uh, and the pavilion, as we were building it, it kind of, kind of took on a life of its own and I kept expanding it and adding. And I think the last thing we added was a kitchen because it got so big, we're going, we're, you know, we need a kitchen here too. So, uh, so it's a great place to hang out. And in the winter, you know, it's t big screen TV and fireplace. And so uh, it's got a pretty good atmosphere there. The barn loft doesn't have any more hay in it. We've converted it to have uh, dances and, and um, we'll have, do karaoke quite a bit or we'll have a, a bluegrass band or certain entertainers come in. And uh, we've had quite a few weddings up there, and especially the aftermath. And, uh, the wedding receptions and so on and so forth. So uh, it's uh, it's multi-purpose too. Everything around here it needs to be a little bit multi-purpose. So. Mary, I know here we've got a riding season, and then the club kind of switches over to a hunt club. Mm -hmm. What's the season for riding, and then maybe even the hunt club? The, the season for riding is generally around January the 13th, 14th through October the 30th. Okay. And, and then the hunting season is from October 31st through that date. Okay, so. that's good. That's yeah. a good long riding yeah. season. Yeah, it is. It is. And we've got a lot of people, a lot of people don't like to ride in the spring, but in February and, and even January, we had some really nice weather last year. And we have that. You know, Tennessee is very famous for its changeable weather. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, as far as the best time to come out riding, what would you suggest to people? If you can work it during the week, it's not as crowded. You mm -hmm. don't have as many people here. You, you've got a chance to get out and, and not be as crowded. You know, if you're wanting to come with the big crowds, you know, we've got scheduled rides where we do karaoke, have a band or things like that, different activities. Mm -hmm. Or you can come anytime. We're open pretty much all the time. Just need to call and make reservations. Eddie? You also come out and ride here. Is it one of your favorite places, would you say? Uh, it is. The, uh, the people are warm and friendly. They're real. Uh, the owner's a good friend of mine. And uh, this place has a history, a real Tennessee history. It's in the mountains. It's closest to the Smokies. I ride with Colonel and the Smokies a good bit. And the facilities are fantastic. And the trails remind me of the Smokies and Big Timber and the creeks, waterways here, are just, it's uh, for easy riding and for difficult. You got the challenge. What's your favorite thing to do when you come here? Well, if I could just stop a minute and know what the Lord made, that helps me in nature, knowing and, and experiencing nature. And that's a big relief for me. That's my down is to be on a horse. That's 50% of enjoying life, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Y'all went up there on that trail today and rode it for Mike and did a prayer up there. Tell me about it. Yeah. Well, they rode the trail and started out riding it. And it was uh, a tail right off. It was, it was a good trail. We got up pretty close to the top of the trail. We stopped and had prayer. Remembered Mike. He would love the trail. It's a good trail. Hello, I'm Gary Stice. I am the number one dealer for Lakota trailers nationwide. Please stop in and see our new facility. Our new facility has a very large display area where we will have up to a dozen trailers inside the building, a very large service center where we can service all your needs. We can take care of your horses, 
as well as your trailer and show you new trailers also. Please stop in and see us on Interstate 71 south of Columbus, Ohio. If you are interested in learning more about Best of America by Horseback, visit our website at bestofamericabyhorseback.com. There you can view our show schedule on RFD TV, learn how to join us for upcoming rides and events, benefits of our trail club and how to join, find riding locations and dude ranches by state, shop the online store for Best of America by Horseback logo gear, read our monthly newsletter to stay up to date, and learn about our sponsors and their quality products. It's all here at bestofamericabyhorseback.com. All about the history, um, how it relates to your family and the history of the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did you, what made you want to learn more about all that? You know, we're products of our upbringing. My grandfather, again, which was a big influence on me, was historian. So uh, riding around, he'd always be kind of going, pointing this out or pointing that out. And he'd bring in stuff and then he'd tell me about a little bit of the history of it. So. You know, I think there's a lot of history buffs. You know, I know a lot of people that love history, and I'm, I'm one of it, and I came by it naturally. So, uh, and then my my uncle did a gene genealogy um, background on the title was "Searching for Stubble Fields." Started 40 years ago. We first met. I asked you what drives and motivates you, um, not only for your business, but in everything you do and preserving this place and creating a new place for people to ride, mm -hmm. what motivates you? You know, I love the land. Um, I can come down here and as we touched on, I can relax just as much out here bush hogging as I can, I guess, sitting by the side of a pool or playing golf or something like that. But, uh, you know, I love the land. I'm one of 28 grandkids and, and um, I've got a real passion for it, I guess, on, on maintaining it and making it better and, and uh, preserving it for hopefully their kids and their grandkids also. I, I love them when they come in and, and be able to experience the old farm place and, and uh, you know, enjoy nature. Mary, the people that want to contact the Bolo Club, how do they get a hold of you? We have a website. All you've got to do is pretty much punch in the Bolo Club and it comes up instantly. It's got our phone numbers on it and of course we've got a Facebook page also. What is the phone number for them to reach uh, you? 931-598-0702. And they get directly to you? Uh, directly to the, or the answering machine if I'm not here. Next, Tom talks with internationally known trainer David Lee Archer. No gimmicks, no excuses, just results. How do you begin? First thing I do, I, I will put a halter on that horse, and by the time I get to my arena or the round pen, I don't know, you know if it's a treat horse because they're trying to look at my back pocket, and I want respect of them. I want them to be in their proper spot. And if you get, all, get that res mutual respect at the beginning, it will come together. Back up, he's out of my space. I'm gonna walk to his hip, he moves that hip. This is a safe horse. And you can't get a safe horse with all the cookies and the snacks. It takes time, effort. My ground works to a minimum. I'm using my groundwork to judge him. I'm not gonna run him around. Him walking is fine with me. So I'll pick up, he turns. And you can't ask for much better than that. I got a little Mustang there that was really green. So I sent her to David. We went on a ride. She got a little spooked. And uh, he took her home afterwards and worked her for about two months. And I was just amazed at the difference 30 and 60 days made on this horse. Just completely different horse. Really, really nice, soft, broke little mare. Everybody's looking for a soft horse, but they get confused in a soft horse. They think a soft horse is you just touch them and they move. A soft horse is if I pick up that inside rein, I can do it just with a couple of fingers. That's a soft horse. If I go the other way, I can pick up that rein. You ever look at yourself as a communicator because you can take a horse, start working with him, and bring out his heart 
and translate that to the person who's going to own that horse. I try to. Pat, how important is it to have David work with the horse and then you with the horse as what he has taught the horse? That's a really important thing to do. He needs you and that horse to be on the same page. That's you right. need to understand the cues that he's taught the horse. You need to understand uh, the approach he's had with the horse. So you all really... speak the same language. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Can you help anybody develop that communication with a horse? If they're willing to learn. They don't have to have a degree in equine studies, just no, average no. folks can... Yeah, just average folks with patience, persistence, and purpose. Well, we recommended David to a couple of people, and he just did a fabulous job. He's affordable, he's honest, and when he puts that rider with the horse, he needs them to be honest about their abilities and how they can handle the horse. He's not going to try to sell you a bunch of gimmicks to get the job done. He's just going to get the job done. So what we do, instead of having a whole mess of people come stay at our place, one person come for a week or two weeks or a weekend, and it's all one-on-one. -on -one. This is a man you can trust. He's a good fella, and it's a pleasure to know him. Yeah, same here, Tom. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Best of America by Horseback and visiting with the families that are here, that have been here for generations, trails any level a rider can ride. This has just been great, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. If they want to find out where we're going to be next, uh, our schedule, how do they do it? Well, we'd love for you to join us on an upcoming ride. You can go to our website, bestofamericabyhorseback.com. Click on our Rides and Events page and see all of our upcoming rides that you can join us on. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Best of America by Horseback. Come ride with us, and thank you for watching.